Did you give people a message? Yeah. Did you get a message? Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. We're going to get started. Amen. Hallelujah. Last Valerie, you read for me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Somebody says, as I love you. Amen. We're going to talk about the love of Jesus today. Amen. Especially this season, amen, that we're in. Hallelujah. Sometimes in our life, we measure the love of Christ according to the blessings and the physical things that we own, the type of car we might have, the house that we have, and the things that we desire, especially this season. But we're going to see through this lesson, it wasn't about what we owned. It was about having a relationship. It was about us being having the ability to praise God. It was about us, God, that he would have a person or a persons that he could communicate with. One that he could love and those that would love him back. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. It ain't about evangelizing, amen. It's not about tithing, amen. It's not about all these other things that we put. Somebody say we put. Amen. That we set a standard. And when we begin to set standards, somebody said, when we begin to set a standard, and not according to what the Word of God says, we begin to cause people to miss the love of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So you can start reading, Valerie Amen. As I have loved you. Imagine the night before Jesus crucified. I want you to think about the night before Jesus was crucified. Amen. He had gathered his disciples. He gathered us peacemakers. He gathered us first like faith temple. To have a conversation with. Somebody say to have a conversation. Have a conversation. Amen. And understand that it's getting ready to be his last conversation. Yeah. Amen. Let's go. He has communion with his disciples and washes their feet. He reveals that Judas is the one who will betray him. He tells the disciples that he is going. He is leaving and they can't come. Then he speaks these words. So this is a man that the people have been following. Disciples have been following just as we follow but it's time for a departation, time for him to exit, amen. And now the person that the disciples were serving and everything that he taught them and everything he teaches us, there's a separation time coming. Mm-hmm. Amen. So hallelujah. Somebody says there's a separation yeah, coming. Separation. Time. And Jesus now is telling them, I know I've been with you. I know you've been faithful to me. I know I have corrected you, Peter. I know Don and Thomas, you're going to doubt me. Uh, Judas, you're going to betray me. You that are following me, it's this day that it's finally came. Where I'm going, you can't come. Hallelujah. Somebody said, we can't come. We can't. And this is the conversation that's going on at the communion table, amen? Sometimes when we do communion, I'm not taking away how we do communion, but we emphasize the blood, we emphasize uh, the body, amen? And that's what it's all about. But sometimes when we come to do communion, we got to really take a long thought. To take a moment to hear what Jesus said, and what were his last words? Yes. Amen. Mm-hmm. And I would have thought that Jesus would have said, Hey, you guys, I'm getting ready to get beat down. And by my, my blood, you're going to be healed. Amen. Mm-hmm. And I said, Oh, his body's going to get broken. I, fi- I figured at this table and at this last conversation, he was going to say, Hey, Pastor Reuben, I want you to know that I'm getting ready to have my body broken for you. But that ain't what he said. Mm-hmm. Let's listen to what he said. A new commandment I give unto you. A new commandment, which means that he had not yet shared this with his disciples. They had learned so much. They had followed him. They have witnessed. They had seen the miracles. They seen limbs grow. They seen people that were lame walk. They seen the blind could see. But he never had shared this commandment with them. Keep reading. That ye love one another. That he what? Love love that we love who? One another. one another. As I have loved you. As what? As I love you. Understand something. Jesus walked with them. He loved Peter so much that he could tell him the truth. And say, Peter, and, and when the crow crows three times, you will deny me. He was God. He was uh, a God in, in the man's flesh. But he was operating in things that people couldn't understand. And sometimes in our lives, we think because we're in the flesh that we don't have the same ability as Christ. But the Bible said that there was an exchange that took place. Uh That the moment that he died on the cross, the scripture said that he had given us the Holy Spirit. To what? He said, wait there and tarry that I may endow you with the Holy Ghost. That what? That you would become a witness to who? All All nations. So what was Jesus saying to us? That we have the same ability that he has. Mm-hmm. 
As a matter of fact, the word of God said that we would do greater works. And sometimes in our life, we limit ourselves. Why? Because we don't understand the last conversation he had before the crucifixion. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Read. But ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. That ye would love one another. And by this. Somebody say, my cousin. My cousin. My sister-in-law. My mother-in-law. My, mother mother my father-in-law. My, father my, my children. Would know that you are my disciple. Come on. He was saying by loving one another. People would know. So not only did he make us a witness. After we received the Holy Ghost, as we carried, and he gunned down with power. Mm -hmm. But he said that if we could just love one another, people would know that we are of him. And that's what he wants the people to know. He don't want to know how rich I am. He's not concerned about how rich I am. He's concerned. If it was that important for him to have this conversation before he died, because the hour had come, the word of God said, if it was that important to us, just as us, some of us, and people we know, they leave a will, they leave a deed, they leave instructions, and whatever they leave was so important to them that they wanted to be passed on. So Jesus didn't talk about the miracles. He didn't talk about his blood. He didn't talk about his body. He talked about love. Yes. And he said, if you want people to know that you're on me, can you love your brother? He said, can you love your enemy who cursed you? That's right. It gets deeper than that when you begin to talk about the love of Jesus. Amen. But he said, then they'll know. And sometimes in our life, we want to rock around with the Bible. We want to make sure everybody knows that Pastor Reuben is a pastor. But it ain't about that. That's right. Amen. He was saying, you can have a Bible or you cannot have a Bible. But what I'm concerned about, Pastor Reuben, is the love. Yes. The love that you have for who? One another. And loving one another means loving those who did you wrong. The scripture says that Jesus was obedient all the way to the cross until the time of death. And that's the love he took with him to the cross. He said, I'm getting ready to depart from you. I'm getting ready to leave you. But before I leave, there's one thing that's so important that I must share with you. Uh -huh. I shared this with you. I took you here. I took you there. I showed you this. Uh -huh. But there's something that's so important that I need to share with you. And the word here says it was a commandment that he never shared. And sometimes in our life, we're going to get ready to leave this world as a person. And my children will come up to the side of my bed and I'll say something to them that they never heard in their life, but something that yearned in my heart. And this must have been heavy in Jesus' heart. That he could overlook his blood, that he could overlook the cross and share about love. Yes. Keep going. If you have loved one, one to another, John 13, 34, 35. By virtue of the fact that this would be, in part, his final words to the disciples. These were what? His final wow. words. His final words. How many of you, when you lost somebody, a sister, a brother, a father, a mother, you remember the last words and conversation that you had with them? You even remember the moment prior to their death. You may not even have been present, but you know the time and location that you were in. And this is what's taking place here. These were his final words to his disciples. Keep reading. They had to be very important. They had to be what? Very important. Uh huh. And notice what he said to them was in the form of a command, not a suggestion. So that means that when he told them that the love they would have for one another, he didn't say, please do it. You have to. He commanded them to do it. He instructed them to do it. He said, if you're going to be of who I am, and you're going to represent me, Pastor Reuben, you better have love. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's no other way. You can quote the scripture, Pastor Reuben, from Genesis to Revelation. Don't mean nothing. You can have a church of 20,000 members. 
But if you can't love every 20,000 members and know them by name and have a relationship with them, there ain't love there. Come on. There's a whole lot of preachers preaching to millions of people, thousands of people, 200 members, 300 members. And maybe one day God will bless me with that. But how can I say I love you and I don't know your name because you're in the back room? How can I say I love you with the love of Christ and I haven't even broke bread with you? I'm telling you. He commanded. He's sharing with us how important it is to love like how he loved. Yeah, amen. Keep going. I am sure that everyone reading this letter has read or heard this passage many times. But in reality, most do not do not think that this is something they can actually do. And think about that. How many have ever had a problem with somebody and the church or the pastor or somebody in the ministry says, what you need to do is go forgive Pastor Reuben and just love. And our response is, man, I can't do it. You don't even know what she did to me. You don't know what he did to me. You don't know what he said to me. You don't know what he took from me. You don't know the things that happened between us. And you're asking me yes, to do something? Yes. And Jesus here is saying that if they would know me, what was Jesus saying? What I'm getting ready to go do after we have this conversation is going to show you how great my love is. Yes. The one that's going to stab me on the side, I'm going to love him too. The two thieves that were on the side of the cross, one's getting ready to go with me. And the other one had an opportunity, but he chose not. So the only way we can miss the love of Christ if we choose not to. Yeah. He didn't say, you're going to go and you're not going to go. One chose not to go. And sometimes in our life, loving and forgiving is a difficult thing. Yes, it is. Keep going. It's a goal that they may strive to. Reach, reach with gritted teeth, but usually with little success. It begs the question, would Jesus give his disciples a command he knew they couldn't keep? Which means that when Jesus asked them to love one another, and people would know by our love that we belong to Christ, that we are truly his disciples, Jesus wouldn't have told me if I couldn't do it. Jesus don't give you a gift and you can't use it. That's right. Jesus don't bless you and you can't give. Amen. Jesus don't give you a car and you never have money for gas. Uh -huh. <laughs> Some way or another, we find a way. Why? Because of the love of Christ. He'll make a way out of no way. Amen. Yes. Come on. But I love it here. He said we struggle with it. She said I beg. It begs the question, would Jesus give us something in a command? That he knew we couldn't do? No. Why? Because the scripture says, and I shared a little bit last night about it. He says, if you could take my yoke, and my yoke is what? Light. So anything that Jesus did will never be a burden or break our back. My God. The love of Christ will never cause you to struggle. Because when he asked you to do it, he gave you the ability to do it. And if you look at it from this perspective, if he knew it before the woman of my mother, and he knew the end before the beginning, he knew who I was going to hate. Yes. Mm -hmm. He knew who I was going to forgive. Mm -hmm. He knew who was going to hurt me. Mm -hmm. And the scripture said that he knew me before the woman of my mother, and he went to the cross, and I wasn't even born yet. He already knew the love that he was going to impart to me. Yes. There's an impartation of love that we don't understand that has been given to us. One reason why is because when we love, we love here where we live at. Instead of looking up where it comes from. Yes. He said, I wouldn't tell you, Pastor Ruben, if you could tarry here. Tarry for what? The Holy Ghost. Did you know sometimes you have to tarry through the Holy Ghost so you can be empowered to love? True love. Yes. You may not be able to do it at the moment, but if you come to the altar and tarry there for a moment and ask God to give you strength and the ability to love, I promise you, He said, I will endow you with power. Amen. You will have an experience that you never had before. Yes. How many are looking for that kind of experience? Mm -hmm. You know, get excited. 
because we want to see the blind see. We get excited because we want to see limbs grow. We get excited because we want to see the miracles of God. But when are we as the church going to get excited just to see the love of Christ? Amen. Get excited because we practice it. Get excited because we did it. Get excited. Just if we got a million dollars today, somebody will get out of the church chair and shout like never before. Uh, they wouldn't even be in here. And you imagine. <laughs> and imagine if you experience the love of Christ. Yes, yes. The love of Christ. That you can't measure according to money. That you can't measure according to what you own. You can't measure according to how big your pocket is. Just the experience of love. Yes. Of who? Of Christ. Jesus. And if he commanded me to do it, and he asked me to do it, and if it was important for him to share it with me before his death, Amen. it should be very important to yes. us. Yes. It should be very important to us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we come to church for all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. I'm not taking away from the, the cross. Some of you might be saying, you know what, he's... It was about the blood and it was about the body. Obviously, it was bigger than that. His conversation with them before he died wasn't the body. And neither was it the blood. It was about the love that we have for one to another. Keep reading. The answer is obviously no. So why is it so hard for us today to love other people? Could it be this? Simple. We can't give what we don't have. Come on. Mm -hmm. You can't love if you don't have love. That's right. Get love. Come on. That's right. My wife can give me all the love that she has, but it ain't God's love. Because her love will disappoint you. My love will disappoint her. We're talking about fulfillment. A love that when you share it with somebody else that hurts you, it changes your life. And the miracle you were looking for was right there. Right there. Through what? Through the love. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a moment. I want a miracle and I want a miracle. And Jesus is saying, come on, just love somebody. I'm telling you. Just love somebody and look at the miracle happen. What yes. miracle? Yes. Watch the life change. Yes. The world is asking questions. People want to be loved. Sure do. People want to be heard. People want to be yeah. felt. People want to be hugged. Amen. We're in a season of Christmas where memories and mindsets begin to revolve over everything that happened to us. And Jesus said, I can beat that. I can show you how to defeat that, Pastor Ruben. Yeah. Well, I've been trying for all these years. Every time the season comes... I think about my dad missing. I think about this person missing. I think about all the things that happened to me all year and all the years that passed by. It's just the kind of season that we're in. Why? Because we forget. It ain't about us. It's about the baby that was born at Christmas time. And when you think about it that way, you begin to see the love. Even before it got to the cross, you're at the place of birth. Yes. Yes, The place of what? Birth. When you start understanding the love. Which means to tell me that when Jesus was born in the manger and among all the animals, that when he was born, love was created. Amen. Yeah, love. Love was brought forth. Uh -huh. So the three wise men looking at the star, they're trying to get to where Jesus is being born. They don't really know what's being born. They just know there's a star and they got to get there. Uh -huh. And I thought about it tonight. They came with gifts, big gifts. And when they arrived, they brought him a gift. Uh -huh. In exchange, he said, my love is yours. Yes. Even at a place where he couldn't even communicate, a place where he was a baby and he couldn't hug him yet, uh -huh. a place where he couldn't even quote scripture yet, uh -huh. that they were in the presence of a new way of loving. Yes. A new way of holding a new, different perspective for us to see things in the manner how he's seen it. Mm -hmm. Take a moment just to think about if he commanded them to do that when he hung on the cross, just for a moment, look through his eyes. Yeah. And in them eyes, the scripture said when he died up there, yeah. he was still seeing me today. Yes. Yes. 
The scripture said that they stretched them wide. Uh -huh. And they hung them high. Yeah. Oh my God. I can't believe they did that to Jesus. But I thought about it tonight. I said, God, why did they hang them high? Why did they put them up there? Was it because that's the way the Romans did things? Yes. But I wanted the people to see them from a distance. Uh -huh. The love that hung on the cross. Yes, 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 praise God. Keep reading. The majority of churches are teaching that God's love for us is conditional. Somebody say conditional. Conditional. And you're going to see, he's going to, we're going to express a couple of ways how we as people, somebody say people, people. Um, begin to teach people that the love of Christ is conditional. Go. They are misguided. Representing his love. They what? Misrepresenting. They're misrepresenting his love. Because when Jesus told them, he commanded them to love one another, he didn't give them no stipulations. That's right. Because if there was going to be a stipulation, he would have shared it with them. Uh -huh. All he did was give them a directive to go love. Right, right. But we as people have had our heart broken, shattered, defeated, that now we put stipulations on love. Mm -hmm. Even in the house of God. Keep going. And it is one of the main reasons that we as Christians are so judgmental and the harsh toward, toward other people. Yes. We are judgmental. Why? Because we yet don't know how to love like Christ did. Because if we did love like him, that's what he said. Mm -hmm. They will know you are mine because of the love you have one for another, which means that there ain't no set standard on how to love. There's nothing that hinders your love, Pastor Ruben. But when people come in, we're judgmental. So when I judge somebody, you know, I'm not going to say we're going to get up there and say, uh, you know, like a court and judge them. No. You know, when somebody comes to church and we look at them, they're like, uh, look at the struggle they're in. Not knowing that in the struggle that people are in, Jesus still loves them. Yes, yes. No matter what. But the love of Christ is still with them. And I love it because he said, the poor will always be among you. I said, thank you, Jesus. I don't have to worry about being rich. I heard that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we don't have to be blessed. That's not what I'm saying. No. But he said, if you don't got it, Ruben, my love will always be with you. Yeah, Keep going. We tend to treat people the way we believe God is treating us. We believe, we begin to what? Treat people the way we believe yeah. God is treating us. Why? Because we're harsh on ourselves. We don't know how to love ourselves. When's the last time you really loved yourself? I remember one time, Pastor Sims told me, when are you going to learn to love yourself, Reuben? Mm -hmm. I said, what are you talking about? I do love myself. He said, no, you don't. Not yet. I haven't seen you take yourself out to eat. I haven't seen you went out and buy yourself a shirt. I haven't seen you go out and buy yourself some shoes. I haven't seen you go out there and treat yourself the way you should be treated. Because if anybody knows how to love you, you better know. I heard that. Yes. Amen. And sometimes in our life, we miss love because you don't give me anything. Or you didn't, my daughter didn't buy me anything. Mm -hmm. Or my wife forgot my birthday. That's measured according to the physical things that we as people measure love by. But the scripture said he paid it in full. Amen. With nothing in return. Amen. And all he asked us was to love him back. Yeah. Have a relationship yeah. with me. When he created, well, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's go. We must understand that God does not love us because we are lovely. Say, God don't love me because I'm lovely. That's right. <laughs> he does not love us because we read the Bible. Somebody say, church, he don't love you because you read the Bible. Church, pay our, go to church, pay our tithes. Or he don't love us because we go to church. He don't love us anymore because we pay our tithes. Or do our best to keep the command to love others. Or do our best to keep the command that he gave the disciples. Is that what? To love one another. Which means, what does this lesson say? We're going to stumble. Yeah. And he ain't going to change his love for me because I stumble. His love ain't going to go from a 10 to a 5 because I messed up. It's not going to go from a 10 to a 2 because I treated somebody bad. His love never changes. No matter what you do. Mm -hmm. Keep going. 
The truth is that he loves us without conditions. That's huge. The truth is he loves us without what? Conditions. Conditions. The world is looking for love and they come to the church and we tell them if you don't come to church, you don't love Jesus. If you don't pay your tithes, you're cursed. Mm. Isn't that true? Come on. Yeah. We start saying things and we start putting certain things according to what we think the measurement of love is because Jesus gave other commandments and other ways so we can be blessed. But if we're not talking about the other ways about being blessed. All we're sharing tonight is the love that we should have one to another. And when you understand, when you have to understand the, the love of Christ, mm -hmm. the conversation that he had at the dinner table, at the Last Supper, before he goes to Calvary, when you understand that conversation, it ain't about how you're going to mess up and if you can't love. It's about that he's never going to stop loving us. Wow, Pastor Ruben, I can't believe that, because I hear it all the time. Uh, every time you mess up, you take him off the cross. Somebody said, that's a lie straight from hell. Uh -huh. That's right. He went up once, went down, resurrected, and it's done. <laughs> it's finished. It's Amen. done. It's finished. Yes. His Amen. love has been expressed. Amen. Amen. The love, the power uh -huh. that has been given to me and to you by what? Through love. love. The miracle the world is looking for today is in love. Did you know that ones that are sick today, many of them that are sick, not all of them, the only, the only thing that's going to heal them is the, the love of Christ, and Jesus ain't with them at the moment, and you are, and he wants to use you. Amen. It's like mama here, mother, get on the phone and say, hey, I have an air conditioning problem, can you send me somebody? And they send them a plumber. She has an air conditioning problem. Wait a minute. Hello, you need to go home. I didn't call for a plumber. I have an air conditioning problem. Right? In the same manner. Sometimes in the church, somebody's calling for love. Yes, yes. And something else shows up beside love. Something else shows up. I didn't call for that hatred. I didn't call for that bitterness. I didn't call for that judgmental spirit. You don't understand that the situation I'm in today, it has nothing to do with whether if I curse God. It has to do that God's love is extended to me so much that I can suffer in the place that I am and know that He still loves me. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Which means that you, if your car goes down, you ain't going to change the way you love people. That's right. And sometimes the things that occur to us, we begin to measure Christ like that. Yep. He said, love, they will know who you are, my disciple, by the love you have one for another. Now you're upset because your car broke, mm. or you don't have the new car, so now you're going to treat people the way you think Jesus is treating you. Mm. And your car has nothing to do with the love of Christ. Yes. It's the car you bought. <laughs> and let's make it work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love it. People come, Pastor, we got a new car. Yeah. Come and lay hands on it. <laughs> right? Uh -huh. Look at the love of Christ. Love, God loved me so much. Jesus loved me so much. He blessed me with this car. Four months later, you're like, man, look at the payment on this <laughs> Suddenly, the pressures of life changes your directive and perspective of the love of Christ, of because of the things that are going on around you. 